thank you for your uh, testimony here today. It has been an interesting afternoon. Um, uh, the other virtual currencies, are they are they based on an algorithm as well? And are is it the same one as used for Bitcoin? There are several algorithms within Bitcoin. Um, there is a central invention, which is the blockchain, and the security model that uses consensus through proof of work, uh, which is a technology that allows a network to arrive at a secure picture of what the current ledger is uh, based on competition. That central technological innovation is used in the vast majority of currencies. I'll call that the blockchain invention. However, there are other algorithms in Bitcoin, such as the algorithm that determines um, how a currency is issued, how often and how much of the currency is issued. Other currencies have taken different perspectives, so they use a different monetary policy recipe. We've seen a very broad range of those choices, from currencies that are far more inflationary in nature, with much bigger supply of currency, even to currencies that implement a demurrage interest rate, meaning a negative interest rate that encourages consumption and discourages savings. So, in fact, as a laboratory, these currencies can express a very broad range of monetary policies and even political perspectives. The underlying invention, however, that secures the entire network is the same, almost exactly the same across all of these currencies. Is there a that we have heard in previous testimony? We heard about the miners, the, the mm -hmm. people who actually. I think they're the ones who actually issue the. The currency or mine the currency. Is there and that there was uh, there were there were some uh, stories in the paper uh, in June uh, of this year where uh, a country a company had uh, had over fifty one percent of the mining market mm -hmm. uh, for Bitcoin. So it was developing a like a quasi or does it have the ability to de develop a total monopoly can one company develop a total monopoly in 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 issuing bitcoins and then how, does that jeopardize does that jeopardize the whole currency itself if uh, how how do you do you have control is there controls on that or how does that all work so i think it's important to emphasize the fact that the purpose of mining is to secure and verify all transactions the reward for mining is currency issuance, and not confuse the reward for the main purpose. Uh, mining is rewarded with currency issuance for securing the network, and the reward acts as an incentive to ensure that the network remains secure. The company um, in question, uh, which is a mining organization, it operates as a pool similar to a lottery pool, which means that they didn't control the hashing directly. They acted as a central location whereby many, many independent miners could pool their hashing power and put it behind this in order to achieve uh, smoother returns on their hardware investment. So, where playing the lottery by yourself, uh, you may win, but on a very irregular schedule, if you play as part of a pool, you get more uh, frequent but lower payments. In a similar way, because mining is a competitive function, individuals do not fare well. They get very volatile payments, so instead they pool their actions together. Interestingly, when Ghash approached, but did not reach 51%, but they approached the high 40s, uh, this led to a market response. And the market response was such that individual miners, recognizing the potential risk to the reputation, at least of the network, although I don't believe it was a serious technical risk, withdrew their mining capacity from that pool operator and redirected it to other pool operators. Uh, shortly thereafter, Ghashio uh, had their uh, cumulative mining power drop to, at the moment, being uh, slightly below 30% of the total power of the network, uh, which provides a very good level of protection against individualized attacks, because that's a very big amount, but at the same time it's not big enough to provide a monopoly. Uh, on a technical note, a mining pool or individual miner achieving the majority of the network uh, can potentially disrupt the transaction processing function of the network for a short term. Uh, however, what they cannot do is they cannot steal funds from any of the users, 
They cannot redirect funds from any of the users, and they cannot invalidate transactions from the users. Um, they can only delay them and delay the processing. So it's not as big a risk as most people believe it is. And because of the market mechanisms behind it, uh, we have seen again and again that it is a self-correcting system. <clears throat> if uh, just so. Um uh, just so I, I can understand whether it's the, the it's it's just a method of exchange or it's a natural currency. So if I have if I have uh, if I have yen in Canada, mm -hmm. it really I really can't really buy anything. I have to go to a bank and exchange it for because no one takes it. Mm -hmm. So uh, so I have to go to a bank and exchange it for Canadian dollars so that I can buy something. And so in, and it's the same in each country. So and. And in each country, those dollars have certain values. So even though my dollar trades, my Canadian dollar trades up and down as compared to the U.S. dollar, and so does everybody else, I still deal in Canadian dollars. Mm -hmm. And um, it basically stays the same for Canadian products unless it depends heavily on imports and all the rest of it. So does the virtual, the, does the virtual sphere itself have its own sort of stability. In other words, when something is priced in Europe for one Bitcoin and I have one Bitcoin, can I buy that for one Bitcoin even though the value of that Bitcoin has changed in relation to the currency of my country or the American dollar? Uh, the, the exchange rates between Bitcoin and individual currencies such as the Euro, Canadian dollars, US dollars, etc., uh, has sufficient liquidity that, in fact, arbitrage is possible between the various exchanges, meaning that uh, the purchasing power of one Bitcoin is the same no matter what the national currency. The fluctuations are minuscule, because any serious fluctuation, if I could buy Bitcoin cheaper for Canadian dollars and then sell it more expensively for US dollars, that creates an immediate opportunity for arbitrage between the two markets, and that's exactly what's happening. In fact, uh, arbitrage in Bitcoin, in many cases, is even more effective because the Bitcoin can be transferred between exchanges almost instantaneously and across borders, whereas in traditional financial markets, moving money like that takes a bit longer. So the differences between national currencies even out uh, very, very quickly, and there are no fluctuations. My Bitcoin purchasing power while volatile overall is the same across any national currency. So can you see can you see a time or is that where we're heading where where internationally people things will be priced in bitcoins and bought and sold in bitcoins no matter what's happening underneath to national currencies <clears throat> only because you save so much money in exchange and you know all the rest of it. Can, can you, is that where we're going? Is that where we're heading? I believe in the long term, Bitcoin will be stable enough in terms of volatility that it will be possible to price things directly in Bitcoin. At that moment, uh, Bitcoin becomes almost a universal currency in terms of its utility across the internet. At least on the internet, that would make it extremely competitive against national currencies, both in terms of ease of use and flexibility. And so I would expect that to happen. However, I think we're several years away before the volatility of the currency is such that things can be priced directly in Bitcoin. Okay, uh, could I have time for one little more question? Uh, Bitcoin uh, can be stored. So when, say, Senator Gerstein, when he buys, I don't know where he keeps his bit. Where does he keep his Bitcoin? Where does, is it? Do you keep it in your own wallet, or do you keep it? Is it? Or is it a? Or is it a, or is there a, a, a virtual wallet where you keep your bitcoins? Can you do? You can do that. So this may be a tiny bit too technical, but I'll I'll provide you with some some insight anyway, which is that the bitcoin are actually not stored by individuals; they're stored on the network on the public ledger. So the public ledger knows who has who all the bitcoin. It. What uh, Senator Gerstein has is the keys, which allow. Uh, allow him to sign for transactions, essentially signatory control over those funds he unlocks it. to unlock them. How you store the keys depends. There are many ways to store the keys. Effectively, they're just numbers. So for my protection, I actually print those out on pieces of paper and put them in a physical medium. I also have keys that control smaller amounts of Bitcoin, kind of uh, spending change, if you like, 
on my mobile phone. I have some on my desktop and I also have some on hardware devices that I'm trying out. Uh, but the vast majority I keep printed out on physical copies because it's more secure. Those can't be hacked. You actually need to break into my house. As you know, companies will do or businesses do so many multiple transactions. They may do thousands, millions a day for all I know. Can you can can bitcoins adapt to that? Is that can you do you know can you pay payroll of a thousand people or five hundred people or two hundred people easily with bitcoins and do the deductions and all the rest of it without or is it a or is it a not only issue? can you do that people are doing it. <laughs> but a medium skilled programmer can do that in a few hundred lines of a programming language like Python accessing the entire financial network and instructing it to do that, um, which is fascinating. But not only that, but they could do that with transactions to a thousand people living in a hundred different countries, which is almost impossible to do with today's uh, money. So if you try to do payroll, and there are many companies in, our, in the technology space, for example, uh, Google pays uh, tens of thousands of affiliate companies for advertising revenue. And the cost to them to paying these companies for that revenue across the world is enormous. So the possibility of automating that and using a single currency for electronic payments, uh, it can be done. It can be done extremely fast. Uh, it can be done extremely efficiently, and it can be done globally. I like and it. Cheaply, too. I like and it. Very cheaply. Yeah.